cheated on my fiance with his brother and I've realized I want to cancel the wedding. So I, 25 female, cheated on my fiance Hugo, 25 male, with his older brother Michael, 28 male. And I realized that I've lost feelings for Hugo for a long time and don't want to marry him. I have feelings for Michael. Cheating on Hugo was the last bit it took me to realize this. Little backstory how we met. I met Hugo and his brother in middle school. I was 13. I got to know Michael beforehand and got along with him much better. He was 16 and flirted with me a lot. But I told him he was too old for me. He was very sad about it, but he said that if I'm later married to his brother, I would still be part of the family. Hugo and Michael both gave me their number. They left it up to me to decide which of them I wanted to get to know better. I chose Hugo because we didn't have such a huge age difference as Michael and I did. Although I actually wanted to write Michael. So Hugo and I got to know each other better, met more often, and got together when I was 15 and he was 16. We were in a relationship for years, but my heart was with Michael the whole time. I put it off because I didn't want to hurt Hugo. He really does everything for me and I can feel how much he loves me. I've met Michael from time to time when I was at Hugo's house or at a family gathering and it gave me the impression that he wanted me as much as I wanted him. I've met Michael from time to time when I was at Hugo's house or at family gatherings and he gave me the impression that he wanted me as much as I wanted him. Of course that wasn't good at all and I'm aware of that. I went on living like this for years and when Hugo proposed to me in September last year, I was so relieved. I thought that now I would only love Hugo and forget about Michael or that he wasn't as present to me anymore. Wrong. Hugo and Michael's aunt got married for the third time last week and the whole family was there, including Michael. There it happened. Hugo talked to his family members all evening and I was kind of alone, but that was okay with me because I already knew everyone well. And at that point, I had quite a headache from the loud music. So I distanced myself and of course met Michael. He wanted to keep me company and I agreed. We talked and eventually one thing led to another and we went to the toilet together. By the way, we were both still sober when I cheated, so we really wanted it. Writing this, I realized how messed up everything is. After Michael and I slept together, we were both very shocked at first. I meant that it was not a mistake, but exactly what I wanted for years. Him. Michael confessed his love to me and told me how frustrating it was for him over the years with the thought of his brother f***ing his love. Michael and I want to be together and finally happy after all these years. I haven't told Hugo anything about my infidelity yet. Neither did Michael. Michael and I are now considering canceling the wedding and gently telling Hugo. I don't want to leave him standing in front of the altar and saying no, not in front of the whole family. I would like to spare him the nakedness slash experience. It's bad enough that I cheated on him with his brother. I finally realized that I haven't had any feelings for Hugo for a long time. I don't want to go on with my life like this anymore. It's not fair to Hugo either. So my question now is, how can Michael and I tell Hugo? How do I tell Hugo that I love Michael? What are Michael and I supposed to do? And what are we going to do about the wedding now? I don't want to marry Hugo. Can the wedding take place and instead I marry Michael? Would something like that work? I am pretty desperate right now because I finally got to be with Michael. But I don't want to cheat on Hugo again. Am I the asshole if I uninvite my sister-in-law from my baby shower who I think is in love with my husband? My husband, 33 male, and I, 32 female, met each other at a ski lodge nine years ago. I was with my young daughter and a female friend and her child. My husband was with his two brothers and three sisters and a few friends. There is a singing competition and both of us were set up by our friends to enter it. Sparks flew during our duet and the rest is history. That is so cute. That's so cute. I'm going to throw up. Back to our first meeting. This was the first time I caught on to my sister-in-law's disturbing behavior. After the singing competition, he and I went to a cafe to chat. His middle sister, Tina, who was adopted at birth, came storming up to us and demanded he come back to their group. She never looked at me and whined when he shut her down. She ran off crying and apparently took her sister's room cards and locked them out so they had to stay with their friends in their room. Oh, hell no. Tina already getting on my fucking nerves. Fast forward to when we bought a house together. We had a housewarming and invited family and close friends. Tina showed up in a sexy club outfit. She ignored me the entire time and hung all over my husband, boyfriend at the time. She kept recalling tales of them when they were little and how close they were. She'd kiss him on the cheek, hug him, and touch his arm when laughing. He was visibly uncomfortable, so I stepped in. At first, I thought she just had a crush on him, but the way she was acting looked like she was the girlfriend and not me. She was going around reminding and telling everyone that he used to say he never wanted to have kids, but now he's playing daddy to my daughter. One of my friends said she thought Tina was weird for talking about how hot his modeling photos were when he did print work back in college. Oh, hell no. And that her favorite photo was of them at a beach in Hawaii during a family vacation a few years back. 
The most bizarre thing she told a few people was that he never dated a woman of color before. And now all of a sudden he's in love. It's only bizarre to me because she's biracial. So I don't know why this would even bother her unless she's jealous of me because she wished she were me. Then things go south. At the end of the night, he got down on one knee and proposed to me. She started crying and ran to the restroom. Their dad went to check on her and then drove her home. I knew exactly why she was upset, but my husband always equated her behavior to jealousy because she's never had healthy relationships. After that tantrum, she skipped our wedding, baby shower, our children's birthday parties, and any other family events that we attended. I was fine with extending invitations because I knew that she wasn't going to show up. She had some sort of mental breakdown and was in and out of treatment for years. Now I have to say I wish nothing but the best for her and I don't know what kind of issue she's going through, but I don't want her to disrupt our peace. I'm currently pregnant and our baby shower is at the end of this month. I'm having it a few months early because I'm at risk for going into labor early like I did with my other two children. My mother-in-law called to RSVP and stated Tina would be riding with them and if it was okay if she brought her new boyfriend. I was surprised because we hadn't seen her in years, but I was apprehensive to agree. Eventually, I did agree, hoping that she had resolved whatever caused her so much distress when she's around my family. Well, it took all of 24 hours for her to start her nonsense. She texted my husband paragraphs at 3 a.m. telling him how she felt about our family. First, she went on to say how much she missed them being close and how I came in and destroyed their relationship when I barely said 50 words to her in nine years. She asked him if he was happy with his life because again, he used to say that he never wanted kids or to get married. She then asked if he had thought about her in all this time and if she could meet up with him before the shower and talk alone face to face. That was the last straw for me. I asked my husband if he knew that she was in love with him. He just shrugged and said he didn't doubt my theory. Apparently, when she was 11, she asked if they could cuddle and kiss. He said no. He admits her behavior since then has always been weird and dramatic, but he didn't pay her much attention because there were many siblings and they all hung out all the time. I asked him if he could uninvite her and this new boyfriend because I think she's going to bring drama to our baby shower. He said he wants to talk to his parents first to see what kind of state she's been in. But I know in my gut that she's ready to ruin our day with her theatrics. So am I the asshole for wanting to uninvite her to the baby shower? Edit. For those of you wondering if anything intimate ever happened between them, the answer is no. I'm 100% certain of this. He has a total of three adopted siblings, two females and one male. He says he sees them as blood related siblings because the three of them were adopted at birth. He's the second youngest and they're all within one to four years of each other. So all he knows is them as his siblings. He said he chooses to ignore her because she's always been dramatic. He's always worried about her physical safety because she suffered from depression for so long and he tries to handle things gently. He's not opposed to uninviting her, but he does want to know what her parents think about her mental state and whether she can behave. Edit two. I keep seeing something about High School Musical. I'm a little too old to have watched that show or movie, so I don't know anything about the plot. I changed some of the details of how we met so that this post wouldn't be immediately recognizable, but this is very much, unfortunately, my life right now. My husband is on his way home despite having another three hours left at work because his phone kept blowing up. He didn't sound good on the phone, but he wouldn't tell me what was wrong. I don't want to call back his mom and his other sister to ask what's going on, but I'll try to post an update when I can. Hopefully we'll come to a final solution because I'm stressed and over this. Update. This will probably be my last update since my husband and I decided we need to be completely removed from sister-in-law's drama slash trauma so we can focus on having a healthy pregnancy and family life. I have an appointment with a high-risk prenatal doctor tomorrow morning that was scheduled weeks ago to check on the baby. Thank you to those who were concerned about me and the baby. My husband ran home because Tina blew up his phone, texting and calling. Now, my husband always texts and calls me on his lunch break to check on me, even before the pregnancy. So I knew something was wrong when he did it. Since he left Tina on red, she started calling and sending a slew of unwarranted and degrading texts about me and our children. So basically, Tina being Tina. He didn't run it by me, but he sent her a long paragraph, which he showed me when he got home, basically telling her off and he told her that he would rather never speak to her again than listen to her talk bad about our family. He told her she would never be invited to any of our family functions and that she needed to check herself back into the hospital if she thought their sibling relationship was ever closer than it actually was. He closed it by saying he would let the family know the reason she was uninvited and that he hoped she's either seeing a therapist 
or would find one immediately. I'm not surprised at his response because the things she said pushed him to that breaking point. I think the worst thing she said was that my miscarriage two years ago, which would have been our first child together, was caused because we don't actually belong together and that my body couldn't even carry any of my children to term. I've had 32 and 33 week deliveries. I expected her to bring something like this up, but I could tell it really hurt him. And that's why he didn't hold back from her. He then blocked her and told me that he's changing our phone numbers. He called his parents and his oldest bio sister, whom he's close with, and explained to them why she's never allowed to visit our home. He shared all of their text exchanges and they were mortified. He asked them to not share our address or our new numbers. They assured us that none of them would share this information with her because she actually asked for his work schedule and mentioned driving up a day early to surprise him. My father-in-law had the most to say, and I get it. It's his baby girl but he hadn't shared much info beforehand with anyone besides his wife. He said he always knew she had a little crush on him, but after her outburst at our housewarming years ago, they had a conversation about her behavior. She told him that she had been keeping a diary about him since she was a teenager. She explained that it was to process her emotions and to challenge negative thoughts. All I heard was that she wrote about him for years. So there's several journals in their home, probably enforcing her beliefs. Apparently, she only stayed away from my husband because my father-in-law kept her in check and he was able to get her hospitalized several times for being a threat to herself. I don't know if all of her issues stem from her unrequited love for him. Typing that just made me nauseous, but I do hope she gets the help that she desperately needs. My husband asked that they speak with her about his last text, but that we don't want to know the outcome. They told us they would deal with her and apologize for thinking she had resolved her issues. My in-laws are saints, and I thank them for believing us and keeping her away all these years. Luckily, she's currently living with them due to her issues, so they're going to speak to her tomorrow morning. The bio sister-in-law called me when we got off the phone with the in-laws. She told me that she was really sorry because she's the one who hooked the new boyfriend and Tina up and suggested that she show him off at the baby shower. I'm pretty sure they're probably not a thing anymore. I'm kind of nervous of how Tina will deal with the two rejections so close together. The two sisters aren't that close and she was audibly disgusted to find out that her sister had been pinning for their brother all these years. She has a theory though. She thinks it started with their older bio brother, Sean, because when Tina was little, she would follow Sean around all the time. He's older, so he went off to college abroad. Tina was about 10 and then he permanently moved to Europe. It seems like the crush transferred to my husband when Sean left. Sean hasn't been back to the States since he graduated high school and no one really has contact with him. So she said she can't call and ask him about it. I have to admit, I'm kind of curious and would have been interested in hearing what, had, what Sean had to say, but I'll rest assured knowing our involvement in this whole thing is over. Someone pointed out that Tina is potentially dangerous and could hurt me or our children. And this really scared me. My husband is gonna upgrade our alarm system and purchase more cameras. I don't work summers and I will most likely be out on bed rest by the time I have to go back to work. So he wanted to ensure the kids and I were safe when he's away from the house. I forgot to mention we live about five hours away, so she would really have to go out of her way to show up here if she somehow found out where we lived. So that's basically it. This will most likely be my only update. I also want to point out for those that think my husband was intimate with her at some point to cause her erratic behavior. If that were the case, she would love to throw that in our face over and over. Plus, a guilty man would have tried to silence her a long time ago to keep me from finding out. You don't have to trust him, but I do. Thanks again for all the helpful input. I'm feeling a little more at ease and I can't wait to see our closest friends and family at our baby shower. You tell me if I'm the asshole, because let's get ready to ruin my ex's life. Let's put a little bit of context behind this. A couple of weeks ago, me and my ex split up and it has been the most toxic breakup. I've been in some very problematic relationships in my past, so I don't talk about this lightly when I say that the relationship with my ex was horrendous. It was emotionally manipulative and abusive. He was super controlling. I lost pretty much all of my friends during this relationship. I very much got isolated. My life consisted of me and him. His life consisted of whatever he wanted. Pretty much everything I did was completely controlled. What I wore, who I saw, where I went, to the point that if I was hanging around with some of my male friends that I've literally been best friends with since school, he would just so happen to be in the area and would turn up to check on me. Anyway, all of these reasons and things that happened in the relationship is not why I'm getting ready to go and ruin his life. So we split up because I called him out on how he was being with me. I'd finally had enough. 
But of course, when I called him out on his bullshit, he then proceeded to say that I'd obviously been cheating on him. There's got to be someone that I'm seeing behind his back because my entire behavior has just switched. To be honest, in that situation, I didn't even defend myself. I was kind of like, if that's what it's going to take for me to get out of this toxic relationship, I'll take it. So first off, since the relationship has ended, he has been telling everyone and their mother how horrible I am to be in a relationship with, how toxic I am, how I ruined his mental health and his life. I've had members of his family and his friends private message me to let me know how much I've screwed him up. So then, out of nowhere, I get a DM from a girl. Yeah, you can all see where this is going. With photos, with videos, with text messages of their relationship together. They had been together for years. I've never felt so horrific as to when I found out I somehow was the other woman. I'm so lucky that she understood that I had absolutely no idea, but I have questions for his friends. If they knew, how the hell can they live with themselves understanding the fact that he has literally got two girlfriends? And if they didn't know, bravo to him for finding a way to hide it. So, the other day, we went up for a coffee. She told me that he is having a family party this weekend and that she's going to go and face up to him then and there. And this is why I love when women stick together because I asked whether or not she'd be comfortable me coming with her. So we're going to go to this family party together with screenshots, with recordings, with all our evidence and we're going to out him in front of everyone. And then they can message me and tell me that I ruined his life. So me and my new bestie, his other ex, got together the day of their family party and printed out all the evidence that we needed. So we print everything out, text messages, photos, absolutely everything we can to prove that this absolute vile specimen of a man had been dating us both the entire time. We arrive at the party and this is where it all starts. <laughs> Buckle up. So we pull up to the house and the back gate, so there's like a little walkway to the back gate. It's open because that's where everybody's coming in. So we walk straight through the gate. When we walked in, I have never seen someone's face drop so damn quickly as his did. You know those memes where it's someone and it's all like the calculations going around their head? That is literally what it was like. He was trying to work out what the hell we were both doing here, how we arrived together and what the hell was about to happen. I actually could not have predicted what happened next. Crocodile tears. He started bawling his eyes out, going over to his mum saying, can you just get them to leave? I don't know why they're here, etc. His friends then came over to me, yelling in my face saying, what the hell are you doing here? You've already done enough and why have you brought your little friend? They had no idea who she was. How has he managed to keep a multiple year relationship away from all his friends and family? Needless to say, that was not at all what we were expecting. So somehow I was the other woman and she was a secret. How? That was it. A fire was lit under both our asses and we were ready to make his life how. She went over to the speaker, turned the music off, cleared her throat and that was it. The first thing she did was speak directly to our ex and say, would you like to tell everybody who I am? Needless to say, his face dropped once again. I didn't know his jaw could open any wider. To cut a long story short, I jumped up right next to her and we basically explained the entire situation, started throwing paper around like it was money with all the photos, all the evidence. One by one, people started picking them up off the floor. All of a sudden, everyone starts turning around to face him. He is still, at this point, blubbering like a baby, but at this point, I think it was more because he knew he was caught out. At this point, I make direct eye contact with his mum and I turn around and say, pick it up and have a look. She reads it, takes a step away from her son, turns around and goes whack straight around his face. I was trying my hardest not to burst out laughing, but we both looked at each other and we were like, well, our job's done. So as we turn around, the whole crowd erupts. We walked out and all you could hear as we left was everybody emerge screaming their heads off. Now he could say I ruined his life. I ruined my sister's gender reveal out of spite. Straight into it, my sister had been sleeping with my then boyfriend and only revealed the fact after we got engaged. So as to save me from getting married to a cheater and because she felt remorseful and ashamed. I broke up with him and cut off my sister, only tolerating her during family gatherings, which I rarely ever came to if I knew she was going to be there. I moved to another state for a job and to start afresh so I had been away from home for quite a while. Months later, I was told my sister and ex-boyfriend got engaged. To say I was livid was an understatement, but I wasn't going to let them disturb me from my life. 
I came back recently at my mother's request since she assured me my sister wouldn't be there, only to find out she was in fact there. I managed to calm myself and pretend I was okay with everything. Deep down, I was upset. More at my mom for lying to me. It turns out they called me for my sister's planned gender reveal party, which I would never have attended had I known beforehand. I never even knew she was pregnant, but I was there already so I had to put on a fake smile. Night came and for the first time in a long time, my sister engaged me in a conversation and apologized for everything and wanted to make up. I wanted to bite her head off and to tell her to go to hell because of the freaking audacity. But then she told me about the gender of her baby. She already knew. To try and rekindle the times where we used to tell and trust each other with everything. At some point as we were talking, I was reminded of when we used to be best friends and honestly, I was tired of the bitterness and wanted to let bygones be bygones. I watched her plan out everything, spend a ton of money and get excited and all. But just the night before the gender reveal, my ex-boyfriend showed up and it took me right back to the past. It kept playing over and over in my head how I was betrayed by them and I got absolutely pissed at how they were happy even after what they did to me. I realized I never had the intention of ever forgiving them so in an attempt to get back at them i told everyone of the gender of the baby right there and then one glance at her and she was on the verge of tears staring at me with a cheating scumbag she didn't say anything and just stormed off it was awkward everybody immediately knew why i did it so it didn't come as a surprise nobody said anything and we all called it a night i'm not going to lie it felt good seeing them distraught it brought me a sense of comfort. All their money had gone to waste since she was upset and refused to leave her room, so the reveal never happened. The house is quiet, but I can see the judgmental looks I'm getting from everyone, so I'm booking a flight back because there's no point in me being here anymore. I don't feel an ounce of regret. In fact, I feel peaceful and at ease. Parents, what horrible decision led to you losing a relationship with your child? I had a baby with my son's best friend four years ago. I had my son at the age of 21 years old. His father passed away two years later. So it was me and my son against the world. When it comes to my dating life, I haven't been so lucky. I did have some random hookups here and there in very short-term relationships throughout my son's childhood. In the beginning of my son's senior year, he brought a friend, Max, home. He was basically at our house every other weekend. I was really happy because my son didn't have a lot of friends. He usually kept to himself. I really liked Max as a person. He was a real sweet guy. We had nice short conversations whenever he was at our place. We exchanged numbers just in case. He would start sending me messages and jokes. I would respond back. My son didn't mind at all. After four months of coming to our house, Max texts me he wants to meet up for coffee out of nowhere. I texted him if it was something urgent or about my son. He responded by saying it's something important. I was curious, so I decided to meet up with him. When I met up with him, he looked very nervous. I asked him what the meeting was about. He told me I can't tell my son about it. He then confessed to me that he was developing feelings for me. I was taken aback by this. I told him that while I was flattered, I had to think about my son. He pleaded with me to just give him a chance. It was so long that I found somebody interested in me like that. Max was already 18 when he was introduced to me and he was a very handsome man. I said yes, but with the condition that it would only be casual dating and my son didn't have to know about it. We met up the next week at his place. I told my son I was going out with my friends. After an hour into the date, we slept with each other. Then we promised to meet up in the near future. Our meetups became very frequent, and as such, our relationship grew stronger. I was beginning to fall in love with Max. We learned more about each other. Max was becoming my main source of joy. I wanted the weekend to start early just to be with Max. It was hard for me to pay attention to anything else in my life. Looking back, it seems that my relationship with Max had a negative effect on the relationship with my son. I had to come up with different excuses on why I wasn't around. I missed out on his soccer games. I think I really messed up when I missed his birthday dinner because I was with Max. I told him that work held me up. It was a week before my son's flight to college, that I got a text from Max that my son found out about us. I got it in the middle of work. I was scared to go back home. When my son arrived home, he never uttered a word about the situation. He just pretended that nothing ever happened. He seemed very cold to me. Never looked at me in the eye and gave one word responses. When it came to dropping him off at the airport, he didn't give me a hug or even look back at me to say goodbye. When I drove back home, Max's car was in my driveway. It was the first time I saw him since I got that text from him. I saw he had a black eye and a broken nose when he stepped out of his car. We hugged each other tightly. I cried in his arms. Once we stepped in my house, I told him how bad I felt for what I did to my son. The worst part was that I wasn't sad my son was leaving but relieved instead. Max comforted me in saying he's just as much at fault for this situation. Max stayed that night. The next day, he proposed to me. I accepted. It's been four years now. Max and I have a two-year-old daughter. He works as a mechanic. The airport was the last time I saw my son. 
He blocked me on everything. I asked his grandparents if he ever contacted them. His grandfather told me that my son told them everything. He said he will take care of my son, but he told me to never contact my son or them again. Two days ago, I got a call from my son that he's going to be in town and he wants to meet up in person this Friday. I said yes. When I went to meet up with my son, I did so without Max or my daughter. It was at a local coffee shop. I found him sitting in one of the booths at the coffee shop. He was on his phone. I was really scared. A part of me wanted to tackle him with a hug and beg for his forgiveness. Another part of me wanted to leave before he noticed me. I said his name to get his attention. He didn't even leave his seat. He just looked at me and said hi. I asked if I could sit. I started by asking him how he was doing. He said he was fine. I was about to apologize, but he interrupted me by saying, before you apologize, I want to understand how the relationship between Max and you even started. I started telling him everything. When it came to mentioning my meetups, he interjected me and started asking me questions that were difficult to answer. He asked, so all the times that you were going out, you were lying to me about where you were going. Weren't you? I nodded. What about the times I asked to spend time with you? Did you lie to me so you could meet up with Max instead? I started tearing up. It was hard being there. Did you miss out on events to be with Max? What about my birthday? That's when I started crying. He told me to save my tears. He said he figured that out soon after he learned about the relationship with Max. He just wanted to hear it from me. He then asked me if I was still with Max. I told him I was married to him and I have a daughter with him. He seemed to need a minute to process that. Then he started speaking. He told me he never had an issue with me dating or meeting someone. In fact, he hoped I found love. He understands that I needed companionship and a type of love he couldn't offer as my son. He told me throughout all these years he felt conflicted because both Max and I were both consenting adults and adults have a right to find happiness. My son admitted he shouldn't have hit Max and was glad he didn't press charges. He said despite all of that, there were some things that he can't get over. He told me he can't get over the fact that I didn't take him into consideration when it came to pursuing the relationship. It was also hurtful to realize that I would value a romantic relationship to the point of being willing to throw away a close relationship with him for it. If I had the attitude of being done raising him and finally pursuing my own life, then that's valid, according to him. However, I would have no right to want to have a close relationship with him in return. Again, that's what he said he believes. He told me he wouldn't have forgotten me when he left for college. He would have wanted me to move close to him after he got a job if he couldn't move close to me. In this ideal world, we would live close by so we could still see each other even after he had a family. He said he loves himself and his life too much to have me back in his life. My son said he works as a mechanical engineer now. He is engaged to the love of his life. She was also raised by a single mom like him until she was 16 when her stepdad came into the picture. Both of them have welcomed him into the family. He told me his future in-laws and his fiancée are his family now. He said he was getting a job near them. He finally admitted that he just wanted closure before permanently cutting me off. He told me not to contact him or his family at all. He made it clear he wouldn't be there for me at my last stage of life or even come to my funeral. He made it clear he won't even hold my hand when I pass away. I won't have the privilege of knowing his fiancé or his future kids. He made it clear that if his half-sister ever contacts him as an adult, he'll be upfront on why he doesn't want a relationship with her. He said goodbye to me and left. I cried so hard that I got the attention of the people in the coffee shop. I was crying on the way back home. I don't even know how therapy can even help. I never felt so much emotional pain in my life before. What do I do now?